So this is the Beeline Moto, my favorite little navigation device. Now I'm very lucky to have them just come on board as a channel sponsor. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it as well as tell you why it's in pretty much all of my riding videos over the last couple of years. So this one is the basic plastic device. This one comes in at 149 pounds. There's also a metal version, a little more robust and premium feeling. But to be honest, I'm not at all careful with my gear. I check it in my bag, check it in my pocket, no case or anything, and it looks, I mean, this is two or three years old now, but it looks nearly as good as the day it came out of the box. That said, if someone offered to swap me for the metal one, I think I'd take it just for that extra quality in the way it looks. There's also a Triumph branded version. They've collaborated with Triumph to produce a version of the metal one with Triumph sort of etched into the casing that's 199 as well and if you've got a triumph bike you like your logos that one might look pretty good i believe triumph doubled the standard beeline warranty and i guess if you finance your bike you could bulk it in as an accessory in terms of mounting i've just got the standard rubber bands around the bars here this one comes in the box as well as a sticky mount so if you've got a sports bike with clip-ons and there's no bar to mount it on much like a gopro pad you can just stick it inside the fairing somewhere now there's also a metal mount for the bars which is a bit more rigid it does feel a little better when you're pressing the buttons because the device doesn't move at all and there's a mirror mount in case you don't have any space on the bars and there's no flat surfaces in the cockpit then there's another option but even though i've got a couple of those other mounts i've stuck with this one just because it looks so clean from the rider's point of view and also i'm swapping bikes a lot so press bikes or when i go to a dealer and jump on a demo bike i can ride up with this on the bike and then just swap it over in a matter of seconds seconds. Now I'll just give you a quick demo of how to pair it once you've installed it on the bike. So switch the device on of course, install the Beeline app and go into it. If you go into settings you can go to connect a Beeline device and now it's looking for my Beeline. Pops up at the bottom, just choose that one and after a few seconds it should be paired. So let me give you a quick demo of some of the main features of the app. Now at the top of the home screen you can set some favorite locations. I've got home and a couple of the dealers that I go to frequently to borrow bikes. Super handy for quickly plotting a route to the places that you go to the most often. There's also saved routes so I've got a few that I do regularly to review the bikes but let's say you've got a few options for how you get to work and you might want to go and take in some quicker ride in or the scenic route you know you can save those routes here and then quickly access them so you don't have to plot it manually so let's say i want to go to cardiff harley i can do that here and it'll load up the route. This is pulled from google maps i believe. If you want to put in a different location you can just do plan ride and then search at the bottom here. Now another thing you might want to try is just tap in on the map. Let's say you want to take in a couple of specific roads. You can just tap your way along like that and build a route. And that's how I've built a lot of the test ride routes that I do. It takes a little time, but once you've saved them as a preset route, you can obviously quickly access them again. So that's a really nice feature for the more ambling weekend rides and stuff like that and taking in your favorite back roads and country roads. Once you've planned a route, you've got a few options so you can reverse it, you can import a GPX as the route, you can save it. Route options like avoid highways, so you might just plan a destination, but then if you don't want to go on the motorway, you want to find some back roads, then just avoid highways and it'll give you a different, longer route usually. You also get sometimes a few options, so three routes here, or you can use compass mode. I'll talk about that in a little moment. Now it was originally developed as a cycling device so you can switch back to bicycle. Kind of handy if you do ever cycle to have a device that does both. Obviously that's going to plot routes that include cycle paths and things that motorcycles can't go down. But those are pretty much the main options there. It's nice to be able to see your journey history here. You can see that I've done 5,769 miles with Beeline. Probably one of my most thoroughly tested devices, it has to be said. And then I love this, the little heat map that shows a lot of your common routes, obviously around Bristol. And I used to live over in London, so up to Crazy Horse in Bury St. Edmunds, up to Triumph in 
Hinkley, done that route a few times. And then some of my favorite test ride routes over in South Wales at the moment. And even my Land's End ride on the Pan America I did a few months ago. Really love that feature. And then lastly, on this settings tab, uh, you've got a few options like auto backlight. So it does have a backlight for riding at night. You can just trigger it with a button or you can just have it come on when it knows it's nighttime. Distance units, so kilometers or miles and feet or whatever. Time format, all that good stuff. And there's even a tutorial of how to use it in there. But I think it's time we get on the road and go for a spin and I'll show you it in action. So I'm just gonna choose this nice little spot in Bristol. It's just three minutes away, but this will be a good example. And I'll switch to compass mode to show you that first. Let's hit go and then stash your phone in your pocket. Now, obviously it just mirrors what's happening on your phone with regards to route and GPS. This is essentially a set of buttons and a screen. So it always needs to be connected to your phone. And of course you always need to have your phone battery charged up. But one of the main benefits of this device for me is that you get 30 hours on a charge from the Beeline. It just clips onto a little USB charger that I've got at home. So super easy to charge and you get loads of battery life and it preserves your phone. So if I've mounted my phone on the bars in the past to navigate, having the screen brightness maxed up is one of the things that really runs it down. And having so many different bikes, I don't always get a chance to run a charger to the bars. I just love this setup. Super clean, doesn't consume much battery, easy to swap around bikes, easy to take off. So compass mode here just gives you a distance and an arrow to your location. So you've just got to pick your way there. And obviously this is a bit of a novelty. It's not something you'd use to navigate to work if you were in a rush, but it's really quite an interesting way to find new routes. So I'm on a one way here on this square. That's a new entry. So I'm kind of heading away from where I want to be and you sort of just have to figure it out. So as I've come down here, I can see that I'm starting to head in the right direction and the distance is coming down. Pointing off to the right here. And look, I know this little route really well, this little area, so it wasn't that challenging for me, but that's how it works. I think it suits the city better than rural riding because obviously you've got more options for where you can turn. And if you're on a country road that took you like miles off route, it might be a little frustrating, but if you've got time to explore, watch out for these train tracks, uh, then, you know, a fun little feature. So let's head up to uh, Clifton and I'll stick it into route mode. Half tempted just to go straight down the tracks there. I think the Tiger could handle it. So this mode is much more like a regular sat nav just a little bit slimmed down and simplified. You still get the big arrow, the signature sort of display of the beeline, but this is really just showing you where you should be heading in the short term. It's not the overall as the crow flies direction to your location. It's just telling you to follow this street straight forward. Beneath it, you've got the distance to the next turn. And then at the edge of the screen there, you've got a dot that shows you the direction of the next turn. So as I approach this roundabout, the main arrow starts to line up with that dot to show you roughly where you should be heading. It also gives you a count of the number of exits just above the distance there. And that will also show you um, forks in the road and lanes and stuff like that. And then lastly, around the top edge there, you've also got a progress bar. So it shows you with little ticks uh, how far through the journey you are. It's not a super precise feature, but just to give you a rough idea. Now there are a few other screens here. So you've got a button on the top as a power button and then a left and right button and a down button here. So going left and right, you can see your current speed. Most bikes seem to overread versus uh, the speedo on this, which is powered by GPS. I try not to think about it though, because that might have saved me a few times. Distance to the destination is counting down and then the distance of the trip so far. You've got the current time. You've got how long you've been on your current journey for. You also get battery status for both your phone and the device. So I've got 28% on my phone, 91% on the device. Really handy to be able to check without getting your phone out your pocket. And then a couple of settings here. So one to switch the backlight on, 
and you can go down into the settings menu, unpair the device or see more information about it, but most of the settings are in the app. Now look, it's not a competitor for like a big fully fledged sat nav, you know, with a big screen and maps on display and uh, downloaded offline maps and loads of data and speed camera warnings. It doesn't really do all of that stuff, but for me, that's the strength of this device. I love the simplicity and there are so many occasions when I get in the car, I plug a location into Google Maps and then I drive for a couple of hours and I'm not really any wiser as to how I got there and you sort of switch off from the navigation side of things. Look at this, stunning, the Avon Gorge coming under the suspension bridge here. Absolutely beautiful. What a day to be out on the bike. But yeah, with the Beeline, I feel a lot more in tune with the journey and where I'm heading. It's not as easy to follow at really complex junctions as a big nav device with a big screen. You do have to get to know the symbols and how they work together, but also it can help to have a rough idea of where you're heading, what direction you should be going in, place names that you're looking for on road signs. Now, you don't need that stuff all the time, but it, it can make things a little bit easier. And overall, I've just noticed that I'm so much more clear on where I'm going. I'm much more engaged with the journey. I'm paying attention. I'm looking for places I haven't, haven't been before. And for me, it just feels a lot more like a navigation instrument for somebody who likes the geography and navigation side of journeys and traveling, as opposed to just kind of zoning out. Now, as I've already said, there are plenty of other benefits to this device. It's super small, easy to mount, doesn't take up a lot of room on the bars no need to wire it in or anything. Battery life is good, it doesn't drain your phone too quickly. Easy to take off the bike and carry if you're worrying about a big, you know, valuable sat-nav getting nicked. The app is very good as well. I think it's well designed and easy to use. All of those things are great, but for me it's that connectedness with the journey and also the lack of distractions. There's no notifications popping up or anything like that if you're using your phone. It's just clean, simple, and really does encourage you to Pay attention and look where you're going. Speaking of which, let's have a peep over here. That's where we just came from down there. What a day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know if you've got any questions down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.